I've been gardening in New York City for about two years now and I always get asked about these vertical planters that you see right behind me. So I decided to make a little review video with my experience with them. I have been using them for over a year now so I thought it would be a perfect time to do it and especially it's May, that time of the year when it's warming up and you're thinking that if you do have some outside space you would like to grow something and also they are having a sale so if you do want to get one of those you can get them for a discounted price. I think that this is their biggest sale of the year for Mother's Day I believe. We just moved to this unit actually in the beginning of this year so I still had to kind of study the sunlight a little bit so I understand where the good spots in my garden are and this guys you can get an option that comes in wheels or also comes with this spinner there's a base here that you can see makes me makes it very easy for me to spin it around so you could get the spinner or the mover with the wheel set and then move it around until you figure out where it's a good space for you but let's get to the real details now those two here are called the original planter so this is a five tier green stock original planter there are five tiers here and they have the longer pockets they also have a different edition that I have it up there up there I'm gonna show you guys at the end of this video that has shorter pockets and is more meant to leaf greens and herbs and flowers etc so I'm starting with this one because this is the one that's on sale and also it's their most popular model those are my first two ones I first got this one I loved it especially because of the lack of sunlight that can happen here in New York City I noticed that the plants because they're higher, they were getting a bit more sun and they're growing a little bit better than what I had growing pots underneath in my front yard garden where I was last year. So it's a little confusing. So we're in a rental building. We used to rent the front part of the building with the front yard. Now we move to the back with the backyard and I'm still able to access that front yard for gardening. So these planters used to live there. It was north facing lot less sunlight than I have over here but they still did well because they were higher so they were able whatever was growing on top was getting a bit more sun and growing a little bit faster but it is actually recommended that you plant bigger plants in the bottom and smaller plants on the top you can see here this kale is really big this is a white Russian kale and it is kind of shading my the plants that I have around here so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these kale leaves to kind of clear up the space a little bit. That's a good thing too about doing kale or lettuce is because they are like a cut and come again crops. You can just easily harvest the outer bigger layers to make a little bit more room for whoever is underneath. Now, just one more. I have uh, now here, there's some more kale. This is some purple kale, but I'm leaving down there. That's too small. I planted that after this. And here's some broccoli. So I don't really take the leaves off the broccoli underneath as much as I planted them in the bottom with the kale because I can har come here and there and harvest. Then I can make more space. And I got all of this to have for dinner. Those are also cool weather crops. They like the cooler weather when it gets warmer. I'm going to replace this with some warm weather crops, which is a very cool thing about these two. You can do some succession planting. I started those very early here and they are growing beautifully, doing very nice. And once June comes, when it's getting, starting to get really warm, I think I'm gonna just put some beans in here. Bush beans do really well with those planters and they'll keep producing food for me through the summer. But for now, let me just put the scale leaves on the side. And there's a lot of different things that you can grow in these planters. Once you get one, they come with these little brochures that tell you exactly where you can plant, what plants do well or not. They even tell you how many plants per pocket you should plant. So rule of thumb, you plant one per pocket. I kind of like to take it to the extreme and plant every pocket, but some people would say that if they have something that they wanted to grow a lot and give a lot of fruit, they would do one plant for the entire tier and then plant some other types on the side that need don't need as much energy such as like herbs you know let's say put a tomato plant in the bottom in the bottom or a cucumber a fruiting plant that needs a lot of nutrients then you can put some basil or some herbs things that don't need as much nutrients around it so it, it won't compete for it so much but a very important thing with container gardening in general is that you have to fertilize your plants this can only hold a certain amount of nutrients per season I do amend my planters and I did a lot of succession planting on them. They have been planted mostly through the year. And once I do that and take a plant completely, I will amend the soil a little bit. I'll go over that in a minute. But before that, it's important that you use some sort of 
fertilizer to feed your plants uh, every other week or every week or so depends on the instructions and the fertilizer in the bottom now i prefer to only use organic fertilizer i don't like to use anything with the synthetic stuff but that's your choice because there is sort of a, its own watering system you can fertilize it on the watering system as well so let's take a look at this watering system because it's actually one of my favorite things about it too this here it's the reservoir it has some holes in here and that's for so excess drainage but the main hole is the one in the middle here which connects with some other reservoirs that are through the planter and water all of the tiers evenly so there's a lot of stuff in there but you can see there's little gray disc in there so that's also holds water and that's all connected it goes through that main tube over here and then first fills all of those gray discs and then they have little holes in them they will drip slowly and water your planter evenly that way so it just rained yesterday <laughs> some of my plants are a little wet but i'm gonna water this planter too just so you can see so i like to come with my hose here you can just fill it up the most important thing about this is that you will hear the water kind of going down and i don't know if you can hear through the camera you gotta keep watering here all the way until some water comes out of the bottom because you want to make sure there's a lot of soil in here you want to make sure that all of the tiers are getting watered evenly especially with the bottom tiers i have heard people that tell me that the bottom tiers are not getting watered very well so a trick is to make sure that when you're watering this you wait until you can see some water coming out can you hear the water and then right down there you see where this little Oh, it's coming so water is coming out i probably watered too much because i just tried to do it for the camera but usually because i have this for a while i literally just hold in here for when it gets about to here and then go down but if you're new to it make sure to follow the instructions so you get to know your planter and you can kind of develop your system as well so coming back to fertilizing i use this organic neptum harvest fertilizer that's one of my favorite ones to use the fish fertilizer and what you can do, I'm not going to do it now because my plants don't need to be fertilized at this moment. You, once you put all the water in here, you would follow the instructions. This one says that for about, use an eighth of a cup per gallon of water. Obviously, it's a little bit harder to measure how many gallons of water you put in here. And what you can do to be precise, what I used to do in the beginning, only at the time that I had to fertilize it, I would measure by using a watering can. This one's a one gallon, I have a two gallon. There's my other garden right now, but I would use the two gallon and I would put a quarter cup in there and then I would just pour it in here this way. So I don't have to wait to go all the way, pour it all the way in. And that way it would drip and fertilize the whole thing. So I knew that was the exact amount of fertilizer that I needed. You see, there is some dripping going on there this is actually the excess water from those big containers itself there's extra holes on them so in case they do get a lot more water they will drip it down and come out to the bottom so your planter don't get oversaturated which i think is a really great feature now let's talk about soil it is recommended also that you have the soil level all the way up to here what I did in the beginning of the season, when I mended, what happens with time is when you water, the soil kind of sets and gets a little bit lower. So that's why it's so important that you fill up to the top. So if this happens, you don't end up with soil down here because you just fill to here and it kind of settled with the water, got heavy, and then you only have half of the planter. This is very important for the health of your plants. Making sure that you have enough soil in there, you'll give your plants a better chance of thriving, of doing better. Since you're already planting in a container and it's a small space, they do need to have as much soil as they can to make sure the roots have space and access to lots of nutrients. It is also very important that you use the right kind of soil to make sure your plants thrive too. You should use a high quality potting mix not a garden soil or top soil or just pure compost on it those other ones tend to be too dense so it is not recommended to use in these containers the potting mix in the other hand has something that usually makes it lighter and that helps with water retention so it is very very important that you use a high quality potting soil i know that soil is expensive and i suffer from that as well myself those planters can be a little pricey and you would think oh i don't want to put a lot of good soil in there because they're so expensive i'm just put, gonna put what i can afford but that way you might not have good success one positive thing about it though is that once you put that soil there you do not need to change it so if you invest to put some good potting soil in there you can just keep reusing the same soil i feel this planters once and then what you can do after is just amend it 
with some compost and some warm casting. So I'm just gonna put a thin layer of it on the top, usually a quarter inch to an inch, and that will help adding some more life back to your soil, adding some aeration, and with the weekly fertilizers, that should be okay. So this is the soil that I like to use. Happy Frog the from Fox Farms. This is a pot and soil mix. Green Stock also recommends it. Also, if you're doing greens, it is also expensive to buy them in the store. Like if you get a nice organic pack, it's gonna be like $5.99. And if I come here, I harvest like I just did a few kale leaves here and there almost every day. I'm saving a lot of money and I'm eating better. So for me, it's a good investment and I think that it is worth it. Another perk about it is that I have them very nice and clean. They're not really touching the soil, so it's not full of dirt when I go wash them. I always wash them because we're in the city. So even if they look clean like this, I always recommend they wash them because you never know if anything did come in here and walked over your things. So I wash them, but there's not so much dirt all over the place and also I don't see a lot of slug damage you see how beautifully those bok choys are growing here I cannot grow bok choys in my base bed I tried last year and the slug damage was crazy so the good thing about planting them here is that the slugs don't come here at least they don't tend to come to this the slugs can do a lot of damage especially this time of the year when it's a lot of rain it's very really wet they love it and they'll come and eat all of our greens all of our hard work so planting them here keep them clean and keep them kind of pest free if you're worried about slugs and those little roly polies are also everywhere so let's take a look actually at my lettuce they are up here in the porch this is a different planter not the one that's on sale now it's called the leaf planter i love it this was my third as i said i started with those two that you saw below there and i just love the look of this because the sh pockets are shorter it, it looks a lot more fuller when you're planting leafy greens and stuff like that but if you want to plant bigger stuff like tomatoes cucumbers eggplant or some flowers that the longer one's really good because if you're only going to have one or two the short rooted stuff like this would do great there too but if they, they do need something that needs more space for its roots will also do well over there so this one is also on a spinner that is also wheels in here and it is full of beautiful greens i particularly wanted to have this right by my door so when i come late and it's still a little cold for me i will come in i'll pick some stuff out last night i just came in and pick some chives for our dinner you can do this come and cut again method i'll just keep picking them through outside then let it grow again once it gets too hot for this i'll plant something else in here i'll plant lots of herbs there also don't need so much root space actually i came back up here just to show you how little pest damage those greens have if I had that all up to my raised beds, I tried to do them on my raised beds last year, they just get all nibbled on the sides, they get a lot of little holes everywhere, and they get dirty, you know, and also if there's anything that goes in the raised beds and the squirrels or even the feral cats that I have over here in the neighborhood, they'll dig around and then just throw dirt everywhere. So this way I keep them clean, nice, easy, right by my door, I can just come in, cut a few leaves, wash it and have it for dinner eating stuff within 24 hours of harvest has the highest nutritional values so i really really like that i can just come here and pick just right before i eat all right so i talked a lot about why i love them and all of the good stuff and but i also want to make sure and come here and say a few things in this video that can present some challenge to you so a few things just to recap the soil make sure that you have enough soil make sure you use good quality soil and also to rotate your planters if you do not have enough sunlight. If you put a planter against a wall like I am doing right here, it is likely that you're not gonna get any sun in the back. I'm okay with that because I still wanted my plants over here in the front to go nice and full. But you could come in and give a quarter turn a few times a day to make sure everything's getting sun. I have planted a few things from seed here. So I have some carrots that took a little time to germinate. I planted these carrots seeds at the same time that I planted those stars in the front and you can see how big those are. But I have some carrots, some beets, and some flowers. Those are somehow shade tolerant, so they're not hurting or dying because I sometimes forget to turn them, I have to admit. But they will grow a little slower. If you want to have one, it's much easier to come here and turn all the time. I have a bunch of them, plus I have a raised bed and a pot garden and their front yard, so I have to admit that sometimes I could forget to come here and turn here and there, which is fine. They still do the plants is still do good but if you didn't have that wall had that in the middle somewhere yes they would get sun from all over just like the one up there gets so i can see that the growth all over it's better on that one than on this so just 
something to keep in mind make sure that you are rotating your planter if you wanted them to be all evenly or if you plant lots of sun loving crops in them i'd like to kind of do half and half i'd like to try to put some seed tolerant stuff in there again in case i'm super busy on a weekend and I forget to turn them before i go to work it won't hurt them very much but the second thing is they are really tall and if you live in a place like me we have crazy storms here in the summer there is a chance that they can tip and fall so you have to put them in a paved surface in somewhere that's level this backyard here that i have is not level a lot of things here in new york are just like kind of all over the place even inside the apartments you can see that the walls are not super straight but what I do to make sure I'm still successful growing them here it's that I make sure that my wheels are always locked there are little locks on the wheels if you want to get the ones with the wheel which all of mine have so that way they won't just go somewhere with the wind and if I have crazy wind and kind of crazy storm I will just disassemble them so I will come here pick up they're gonna be really heavy now because it just rained and then when this soil is wet it gets heavy and then I'm gonna take it down two layers because if there is a crazy hurricane or anything come down I do not want to risk on my plants to die so I just take a couple layers down and keep them in the ground until all the risk of the high winds and storm have passed with that said those little watering discs sometimes need maintenance which I like to give maintenance to mine I noticed that they can get clogged sometimes which is partially my fault because sometimes I water them with uh, rainwater and then I collect it in here and I just dump it on the top and there's some leaf debris or some dirt in there so don't do that I learned not to do that anymore because if I do that sometimes these little holes will get clogged and the planters won't get watered properly so once I take them down, because I do have the storms for here in New York City, I will always kind of rinse this. I'll get a, I'll get a hose and I'll just make sure to do this. I come down clean from both sides and I put the water in here and make sure everything is nice and dripping. That's doing good. If you do this too, because you have to take them apart anyway, you would have just a higher chance of success too. And if you notice that, yes, even though you follow the instructions and you are watering from the top and you've seen that your plants in the bottom are getting dry, I would recommend that you try to take them apart and clean the watering discs because if they do get clogged, that could happen to you. That doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. So if you don't have storms, but you wanna maybe twice a year, take them apart and kind of clean up the discs, I think it is a good practice to have. I have actually a video when I was assembling this pink one and I talk about all that stuff. I put the soil in, so I show you how much soil I put and I show how I assemble all this water disc, how I put them all together, how I planted everything. And I have another video when I got my third one, the, the one that you saw that was up there with the lettuces. When I did have a storm, they were all down, so you can see that too. And I took that time to amend those planters for the fall with some fresh warm castings in it. So I'm gonna make sure to link both videos so you can watch that as well if you're curious. I personally love them. I am an affiliate with them. I bought this first one and I loved it so much that I actually reached out to them to see if we could work together. So I have a coupon code for you guys, if you guys are interested, that actually works on top of the sale. And I hope I covered most of your questions here in this video. But any other questions you might have, please make sure to put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to answer them and try to help you out. I love encouraging people to try to grow food in small spaces. It's so discouraging for us sometimes to think that, you know, to see all of these big YouTubers with biggest gardens and farms, and we're just here in the city. I mean, New York City, the biggest city in the US, and the most densely populated one too. But if you do find some space outside this could be a great solution for you so you can have a lot of variety in this small space another thing that's actually beneficial is that you don't have to bend so if you have a planter that grows up like this it will be much easier for you to manage because you're kind of garden standing up when you're doing ra even on raised beds or in ground gardens you be constantly pulling things and trying to you know harvesting and checking for bugs this makes it much easier for you to do your daily maintenance to come in real quick with a cup of coffee in the morning you know, try to ease off in your day and look at the leaves, water them, make sure everybody's doing fine, harvest if you need to harvest, and you're done. So that is another great advantage of it. And they make great gifts for moms. 
I love encouraging more people to grow some stuff in the city. And if you want to fall in love with gardening and you still are not in the space that you like yet, you don't have a huge backyard or you're in a rental like I am, this could be a great solution for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I could share some helpful information to you. Please make sure to check the other two videos that I have about the green stock. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you're curious to see what I'm growing here in New York City. And like this video too if you got any value out of it. I'll be super grateful if you can do that. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time.